Hi, all. So yesterday I talked uh, very briefly about one of my heroes growing up, uh, L.J. Smith. And I actually did want to talk just a little bit more about her because she really has had uh, probably the uh, <clears throat> biggest influence on me as a writer, especially because I got into it at a really young age. So actually, I initially didn't really want to read her work because my grandmother had sent me the books when I was about 10 or 11 years old, around 97, 98. And I had no interest in them. And I will show you why, actually, because the covers are super creepy. Um, <clears throat> she sent me these three. They are Daughters of Darkness, Spellbinder, and Soulmates. They are actually books two, three, and six in the series. I believe there's nine out at the moment. Uh, and yes, George R. R. Martin fans, I've been waiting 20 years for the conclusion of my favorite series, Love and God, yet still not complaining. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so let's take Daughters of Darkness, arguably one of her more popular works. This one features the very, at least to her fans, of the Night World, a uh, well-known pairing of Ash and Mary Lynette. And I really didn't want to read it because the cover freaked me out. I mean, look at this creepy little business going on here. And let's really not ignore the fact that, especially when you're about 10 or 11 years old, that's supposed to be the main guy character that she's falling in love with, and he looks kind of creepy. So... Uh, but I did read them anyway. My mother told me, your grandma bought them for you. You will read them. So I did. And I became obsessed. And I ended up begging her to buy me the whole series, which she eventually, bit by bit, did. And the thing that stands out most to me about her work, especially back then, is that she was very... Uh, concerted had made a very concerted effort to uh, focus on strong female characters or if they weren't strong in the moment the ways that they took advantage of their situation to become stronger <clears throat> um, I believe all three of these actually feature pretty strong female characters to start with um, but Daughters of Darkness going back to get at that again Mary Lynette is very a little bit nosy um, and she's very much into Nancy Drew Mysteries, which actually was relevant back when these came out. And <clears throat> so when she finds out that her neighbor has been murdered, she investigates because she believes that her nieces, or great nieces, or I forget what she calls them in that exactly, but she believes that they might have had something to do with it. Well, they didn't. Um, but that is how Mary Lynette and her brother become involved with the Night World, which is Secret Society of Vampires, Werewolf, Shapeshifters, etc. And that's how she meets Ash, who we actually met in book one, uh, Secret Vampire, very briefly with uh, the main character Poppy when he tried to, I guess, turn her over to the council because she was illegally turned into a vampire. And she basically mentally blasted him like a fire hose and he respected her for that, go figure. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, what's also interesting, though, is that all three of the nieces, or great nieces in this book, Rowan, Kestrel, and Jade, are also strong in their own way. Even Jade, who is definitely the more childish of the three. So, uh, L.J. Smith really went out of her way, I think, to portray a very... Two, two different kinds of strengths, or actually four different kinds of strengths in between these women. Um, Rowan, who was the oldest sister, was a very calm, mature uh, sort of inner strength. She was also, you know, like she, like her sisters, holds the darkness that a vampire just inherently has. Kestrel was a bit more like a cat playing with her food, like it's all kind of a joke to her. But she does have at least a bit of a soft spot for... Mary Lynette and Mark by the time all said and done. And then Jade just ends up falling in love with Mark. She's just a little bit childish, but she does have her own strength in that she has absolutely no compunctions about standing up for one of her own. Even hissing at her brother when he 
comes too close at one point and they don't want him there. Um, <clears throat> but there's this contrast with Mary Lynette in that she's very much a uh, human and she's weaker than them in that she's not a vampire. So she just can't have that inhuman touch that in vampires inherently have. But that doesn't stop her from getting involved and it doesn't stop her from trying to solve the mystery of who killed her neighbor. And it's just, I guess it, I like that, spoilers, if you haven't gotten that by now, I like that by the end of it, she acknowledges that she can't be a vampire. It's just not her nature. She is human. She can't be like the sisters who are, have no troubles hunting in the night and drinking blood and things like that. And I love that L.J. Smith just took the time to contrast those and show that there are several different kinds of strength, and that's just in one book, much less the whole series. Every female lead is extremely unique, and every female lead is extremely strong in her own way. Um, <clears throat> Thea in Spellbinder is a much more almost spiritual sort of strong. Like She's very connected to her witch side, um, and very reserved around humans, but she does end up falling in love with one, which is kind of a big point of all of these, is that actually reading a passage from it, I'll always love this. Um, the night world isn't a place. It's all around us. It's a s secret society of vampires, werewolves, witches, and other creatures of darkness that live among us. They're beautiful and deadly and irresistible to humans. Your high school teacher could be one, and so could your boyfriend. The Night World Law says it's okay to hunt humans. It's okay to toy with their hearts. It's even okay to kill them. There are only two things you can't do with them. One, never let them find out the Night World exists. Two, never fall in love with one of them. These are stories about what happens when the rules get broken. I love that. That pretty much sums up the entire series. Every single book it features different main characters, different main female leads, different romantic relationships, and what happens when these humans and otherworldly creatures become entangled. In one case, it was just otherworldly creatures becoming entangled with each other while trying to save humans. It's just such a good series. Like It's just so unique. I've never read another series that does that, that stays all within the same world, but takes a different viewpoint all across the United States. It's fantastic. I love it. And it's all just, there's always a different situation. There's some that focus on witches, some that focus on vampires. There's only really one that focuses on shapeshifters, which is kind of a shame because I really think she could have done more with that. And I'm hoping that if the last book ever does come out, unfortunately, L.J. Smith is or at least last I read, she was extremely sick, and I don't know if she will be finishing any of her work. Um, <clears throat> but it, I do wish that there had been a bit more done with the shapeshifters throughout the series. You really only get one book that shows that they can be good. Um, Daughters of Darkness uh, does have a werewolf, but he kind of ends up trying to slightly rapey kill everybody. Um, so it doesn't really cast them in a good light. And it is also mentioned that shapeshifters are considered the lowest form of night world people. Um, and I guess vampires and witches are sort of tied at the top tier since long ago, which, you know, vampire wed and had children in order to bring peace, a very tentative kind of peace, and the shapeshifters just never had that opportunity. But I guess... My whole point is that she is my heroes for very, very good reason. And even if I'd never read any of her other books, I would have been delighted. I'd still say the same thing with her Nightworld series because it's very in-depth. And for such short books, like, they're actually very small. They're very tiny and thin. And this is how long that uh, young adult books used to be. Like, you'd see the same thing with Christopher Pipes' The Immortal. Um... Richie Tankersley Kusick's The Vampire, or just Vampire, I guess, and The Silver Kiss by Annette Curtis Klaus, or Claus. I'm not really sure. I'm terrible with last names. I'm sorry. Um, but 
for such short books compared to what we have in the young adult category now, it's so full in every single one of the culture, the darkness, the mythology, the the just the richness of everything. There's different societies. I have a tattoo because of one of them. This is a, a black iris. It's purple. I guess black flowers are considered very dark purple. But I got the black iris because that was a big symbol in one of her books. And like I just loved her, her work, especially her early work since I was a child, basically. And I always, if I don't really, I guess, strive to have her um, style, because her style is extremely unique, and it's something that I really can't do, because there's a lot more simplicity to it than I can really bring myself to do. But I do try to think of uh, what I was like at that age, reading these books and how they affected me. And I think about now, looking back, all the ways that, that worked. And a big part of that is that I just... I didn't realize it at the time, but all of the main characters were someone to be admired for me. They were all someone that I would have been happy being if I had lived their lives. There was really, I mean, they had their flaws, but there was very little about them where I thought, oh my God, what a horrible person. And I've thought that with other young adult lead females, unfortunately. Like, even though as much as I love Rochelle Mead's work, like, my first thought with Rose is that, oh my God, I can't believe she cheated on someone that she was in a relationship with that is horrible and it just kind of gets brushed off and not really addressed again before that particular series ended <clears throat> um and i don't really i try to not do that with my main leads or like i try to give them flaws but i try to just make them seem more human more relatable more like people we would actually know and I really wish that we had, just, I guess, a little bit more of that, which like, that pretty much is the whole reason why I write these in the first place. Like, I write what I would love to see in the genre. I want to see more inner strength female leads. I want to see more romantic relationships that isn't just people losing their minds because, oh my god, I love you. Like, I want reasons behind it. I want chemistry. Like, the chemistry between Rochelle and... <clears throat> John Quinn in The Chosen is insane. They are still one of my favorite all-time fictional couples ever. <clears throat> um, pardon me. I think I'm losing my voice. I apologize. Um, and I thought the same thing when I, I actually didn't read The Vampire Diaries until I was in my 20s because... Uh, L.J. Smith's works had just kind of fallen off the map and she disappeared for 10 years. And then when Twilight came back out, Vampire Diaries came back out and all of her works got republished. Um, but with that came Vampire Diaries and I read that. And I always thought that the chemistry between Damon and Elena was just insane. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with Stefan. I just wasn't really a huge fan of him. I wasn't really team Stefan, I guess. I was more a team Damon. We had a thing for the really dark bad boys and i completely attribute that to lj smith actually because i had a massive crush on john quinn growing up as well as uh, gabriel from the dark i'm sorry the strange visions trilogy oh, love that man um but <clears throat> i think that i try to write what i would like to see more of and i think most authors should and do <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, so hopefully, even if it's just like a few people, like even if it's just my niece or just some kid who picks up my books at one of the local libraries, I hope that someone reads my work the same way that I read L.J. Smith when I was younger. I hope that even if it's just one person, I inspire them to think, I wonder what I could do and what I could bring to this passion that I have and that I love uh it doesn't even have to be writing just like there's something that clicks with them like there's just this thing that they want to improve they want to make different they want to make unique they want to see more of it in the world and it should be a positive thing it should always be a positive thing when you want to make that kind of change I would love to do that for even just one person because that is exactly what LJ Smith did for me growing up like 
every bit of writing I've ever done in my life is because I read her works and that was the time I finally said, I want to do this. This is something I'm passionate about. This is something I love. This is a genre I can get into. This is something that just speaks to me. And from ages 10 to now, I'm almost 30, I, it still speaks to me. There's something about the young adult, particularly the paranormal genre, that speaks to me. There's just something about it that's interesting. You're always looking through new eyes that haven't completely figured out the world, but they're starting to get it. Like, they're old enough where things are starting to make sense, but they're not quite there yet. And it's so confusing and it's so emotional and everything's just rash and crazy and felt so intensely and it just doesn't stop. And yeah, I guess that's really just what I want to be doing. And I, I guess at the end of the day, I just, like anybody else, I want to be at least a little bit of my hero. So that's what I am aiming to do. We'll see if I can, even if it's just a little bit, I'll be totally happy with that. And right now I am, I'm pretty happy. So thank you everybody for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.